Hello once again and thanks for joining us tonight on News of the South. I will be speaking to Mr. Lloyd Musipa. Mr. Lloyd Musipa is from the organization called APRI, is the Africa Public Policy Research Institute. We are hoping to connect with Mr. Musipa in the next one minute or so and he will be telling us more about this organization and how they expect to, to develop Africa. So, Mr. Lloyd Musipa should be joining us any minute from now. You are free to join the discussion, send your comments, and hopefully Mr. Lloyd Musipa will answer all your questions. And if you would like to follow up with all the interviews that we are doing at News of the South, you can subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. It's News of the South on YouTube. And you can also visit the website. Website is www.newsofthesouth.com. I'll repeat that, www.newsofthesouth.com. We expect to speak to Mr. Lloyd Musipa shortly, so we're just waiting for him to connect with us, and we will get the meeting underway. So if you'd like to, to get in touch with us, to choose any issues concerning Africa, the world, we are here at News of the South. You can telephone us, you can... Okay, Mr. Lloyd Musipa has just joined us. Welcome, Mr. Musipa. Oh, thank you, Gina. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you so much for joining us tonight at News of the South. So I would like to start by asking you, what is your position in the organization African Public Policy Research Institute? Right. Uh, I'm one of the founding members uh, of the organization. Uh, it is a vision that um, a group of uh, experts uh, based in the diaspora, some in, um, in Zimbabwe, of course, uh, that have come up with this project. Okay, that's great. So when, when did this project start? Um, we put this project together in 2016. Um, so for the last, basically for the last two years, we're doing a lot of groundwork. Uh, establishing the the actual foundational uh, issues that has to come with the project of this of this magnitude, so we have experts uh, literally everywhere in the globe, uh, experts in health, mining, you know, across the board. The idea behind uh, APRI, uh, which stands for Africa Public Policy Research Institute, is for us to proffer solutions to the African continent. Obviously, the idea is to first start with our own challenge begins at home, start with Zimbabwe. Uh, we do realize that after the politicking is over, we, st we now need to fix up uh, Zimbabwe, for instance, and, and obviously other African countries will uh, benefit from this project. And um, bringing the experts together, having a database of the experts and um, the knowledge the, 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 that we can uh, actually post the politics, bring all these experts and knowledge, you know, to bear, and then, uh, you know, get on with the business of uh, fixing our country. Okay, that sounds great. So are, are most of your members from Zimbabwe or you've got from other African countries? No, 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 we got, um, our membership uh, is, is, is actually international. We've got members from well, South Africa, you know, Zambia, Botswana, um, you don't have to necessarily be Zimbabwean to be a member. You just have to have an African uh, passion for Africa, uh, passion for African development. And uh, it, it, it's not a black and white thing. It's anybody who's African at heart and they are an expert in a certain area. We, we, we bring them in. Okay, can you name a few? Okay, thank you for that. Can you name a few of the executive members and probably the posts they hold and the, their duties, if that's possible? Um. We have a number of experts. Um, I mean, in Canada, we've got Irene Mazrita. You, you, you probably have seen some of our posts on, on Facebook. Uh, in South Africa, people like Jamila Sani. We've got uh, uh, Mr. Simango in Zimbabwe. Uh, here in the UK, we've got a number of uh, experts. There's myself, uh, there's Kosnati, uh, Zimba. It's, 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 it, it is a group of experts, you know, we've got Brighton, Chireka, you know, everybody that wants Zimbabwe to move forward is actually on board. It is actually a database of experts waiting to get Zimbabwe working again and thereafter, you know, moving to the other African countries. Wow, that sounds really good. I think I'm the only one missing from that list and I guess 
in a couple of days time <laughs> i will be joining you guys to get up we, to we, another we, 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 we would want you to bring your expertise to bed. Uh, nobody is uh, excluded as long as you have a passion for Africa and in this particular instance, Zimbabwe at heart, you know, would want you on board. Definitely, I have a passion for Africa. So does how much does one have to pay to be a member? No, we're not charging anybody uh, money for this project. Uh, we, we, we want the passion, we want the expertise. You see, Zimbabweans or generally Africans, um, we, have an, we are an educated lot. And what has been happening in the past is that we have ha we've been outsourcing uh, policy issues to people who are not uh, Africans. For example, um, APRI is actually modeled on, uh, on Charter Mouse. And um, I did a lot of work with Charter Mouse, and I found out they've got an Africa desk, an Africa desk that is not run by Africans. From that Africa desk, they actually spell out policies for African countries, but they themselves are not African. They actually have to do the research first in order to, you know, start talking about Africa. So our thoughts, my, myself and my colleagues, was that why don't we, the actual Africans, come up with an organization that can do that? Because this, you know, I mean, Africa is ours. You know, it's, there's no, it doesn't make sense for African experts to be sitting in, you know, dotted all over the world and not contributing anything, you know, pouring back to Africa or their respective countries and people who are not Africans are doing it on their behalf. Okay, I agree with you on that one, Mr. Lloyd Pusibo. When you look back into history, you find that uh, a lot of books are history books that have been in existence yeah. for the last couple of years were written by non-Africans. They're writing about our continent and yet we're sitting with our hands folded doing absolutely nothing. It's only been in the last couple of years where we've seen some some African historians beginning to get pen and paper. That, 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 that is exactly that is exactly the issue. Those are the issues we're trying to correct. You find that if you look at uh, uh, um, Ghana, you look at uh, South Africa, you look at Zimbabwe. You know, let's bring it closer home. If the history that we had to read, the books were not written by Africans. It's only recently that we have um, Africans actually writing about the history of Zimbabwe and correcting some of the inaccuracies. And it would be better still now that at this stage where we are now, with the knowledge that we have and the experts that we have, we we'll probably write a more accurate uh, version of, of, you know, of our history and you know, for our children to learn. Because you find that a lot of people misrepresent what actually happened. For example, if you, if, if you watch... Uh, um, the Zulu movie, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is based on a, on a, on a diary written by a white man during the reign of uh, of King of King Chaka, you see, and the misrepresentations in there. Let's say, for instance, a black man had actually written um, a coherent story about uh, what happened between uh, Chaka, Zulu, um, Zilikas, and the lot. We'll have a different version of history. So it is important that we look back in terms of history, we correct our history. Uh, in terms of policy issues, we look at what is African or appropriate technology with a twist to, you know, to our own way of doing things. Okay, another example is the discovery of Victoria Falls. It's, it's, it's stated in history books. Exactly, um, yes, yes. Yeah. How do you discover, how do you discover uh, uh, um, a wonder, a seventh wonder, eighth wonder, which belongs to people, you know, when people were living there, you see this kind of misrepresentation. That is our that is our premise. We, we obviously we have a very broad mandate that we seek to be you know to be filling out. But this is where we begin. We need to look at ourselves and rediscover who we are. You know, we we we, we are not. Our education in the past has told us that you never sit there to think about what you can do for your country or for your uh, where you come from. It is important that we re look at ourselves and the ability and the, the talent that is in us as, as Africans and you know we, we you know we work from there and that is the that's where you know the ends the birth of APRI. That is so true Mr Msiba and I do hope that after this interview a lot of Zimbabweans out there will begin to get pen and paper and jot down the history. You can talk to your forefathers who obviously know more about um, the historical facts that have not been documented. There are others that have been documented, but the information is not accurate. So in terms of policies, what policies have you come up with so far? Um, 
what when we say we've got a database of experts, these experts speak into the various sectors. I'll give you an example. Um, we are primarily going to be focusing on Southern Africa. Right? So we're talking South Africa, we're talking Botswana, we're talking Zimbabwe, we're talking Zambia and uh, Namibia, those countries. And our membership draws mainly from those countries. And, you know, they not, are not necessarily in those countries, but they come from those countries. So each grouping, we, we, we subcommittee, in sub, you know, committees, each group looks at the various areas. If we look at Zimbabwe, for instance, what are the issues? Healthcare. We've got a group of experts that are looking at healthcare. What are the other issues? Mining, business, um, governance, uh, institutions, the constitution. So we are varied, and this is something that is it's a growing project. And our database is, is, is increasing. We, 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 you know, we, we, we are looking at all these broad issues with uh, the idea that after the politicking is over, we start you know, speaking to our countries. Uh, we are engaging uh, with the private sector. We uh, engage governments. So we engage uh, civic society. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about coming up with strategies that work, you know, for our various African countries. I believe after the politics is over, after this particular generation or the last generation, you find that the up-and-coming generation, the ones influenced by travel and exposure, would want a better Africa, a more a, a working Africa. So this is where we come in. We we trying to kickstart that process. Okay, talking about membership, how many members do you currently have? Uh, we have over two hundred members at the moment, and all these are experts in their fields. So um, we're not short of people wanting to you know to go somewhere with uh, with you know with this project. Mr. Nzipa, so shall we safely say that APRI is an African think tank? It is an African think tank, yes. It is an African think tank, uh, think tank and uh, preferring solutions to the African continent. That is it. We, we, we've had in the past uh, think tanks that are not um, homegrown, speaking into policies of, you know, of our respective countries in Africa. The idea here is that with APRI, the difference is that it is run by African experts who are experts in their various fields, and speaking with authority in their various fields. That is, that's APRI. Okay, sounds like you're doing a great job there for Africa. Because when we come back to our motherland, Zimbabwe, we've got issues on the road, we've got health issues there. Why is it that Zimbabweans just talk and criticize and say the government is not doing this, the government is not doing this, but we as Zimbabweans, we are in the diaspora, there are many of us. Is it so hard for us to, to come together and start up a project to fix these roads, to do something about the health system in Zimbabwe rather than wait for the government, because obviously it's taken too long for the government to solve these issues. Do you think this is one of the plans that APRI will be looking into maybe in the not too distant future? Um, we are aware of the fact that we are a very polarized uh, uh, society uh, or, or people, Zimbabweans. But at some point, obviously, this will end. And... Uh, there is no way we are going to rebuild a country like Zimbabwe with that polarity in place. It is important that with respect to, to what they are good at. So the polarization will go. The hate, whatever it is, that will go. The elephant in the room is the politics, and that will self-resolve. And when that is resolved, you will find that what will be required then now is those experts to now start handling the various policy decisions that the government of the day would, would you know, would require. Um, so civic society, the, the private sector, uh, all these are area, um, sectors that would need, you know, the expertise that APRI has managed to put, you know, under one banner, under one house. That is the vision. Okay, thank you so much for that. And if there's anyone out there who'd like to join APRI, Maybe you can give the contact details, how they can get in touch with you. Yes, um, our contact details are on the banner that uh, you advertise there. There's an email address there. Uh, you can ask your questions. You can, uh, you know, tell you, you know, if you are in the health sector, we'll put you together with the guys that are working on the health sector 
policies, if you are in the business, if you are in the legal, constitutional governance issues, the various um, uh, disciplines that we are going to need as, uh, as, as a country, as Africa or as Southern Africa, uh, in order to move forward. Okay, so your first uh, point of call, are you going to be doing something in Zimbabwe, in South Africa? Which country is the first one on your, on your agenda? We, 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 are not, we are not focusing on, on a single country. Obviously, at this moment, the effort will probably be more on South Africa and Zimbabwe because these are countries that are going through a transition of, of sorts. Uh, we have people working in Namibia. We've got people working in Botswana and, um, and Zambia and Osaka. So uh, with respect to, to, to Zimbabwe, uh, we have people working on, on the issue of the elections. Uh, what uh, the, the 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 fundamentals? What it will take to have you know the election that the election is going to be free and fair? The BVR issues, um, the constitutional issues. What happens uh, if a certain party win, uh, wins the election and uh, power does not uh, um, uh, transfer? All those are issues that you know we, we're looking at. So when we are able to speak with authority in that area, uh, I think as APRI will be will be very relevant. Okay, in terms of speaking to authorities in different areas, for example, Zimbabwe, South Africa, what challenges do you face? Do you face any challenges at all? Um, I think that the, the challenges are probably uh, minimal as, as soon as they understand who you are and what you seek to do. Because if, if, if you are coming in and you are offering to, to be part of the solution and not the problem, you find that you will get cooperation. And we are getting a lot of cooperation from you know, governments in, in that part of uh, Africa. We, there's cooperation from the Zimbabwean government, we've got cooperation uh, from the South African government, and we will deal with the government of the day. We, we don't seek to say we'll deal with this particular party. We are non-aligned, we are a non-partisan uh, uh, organization. We will seek to speak to the government of the day, deal with the government of the day, and uh, proffer solutions and proposals for the government of the day. That sounds so good, Mr. Mtipa. And before you go, is there anything else you'd like to highlight to talk about before we end this discussion? Uh, well, the only thing I can say is that as Africans, we, we, we are our own um, liberators. And uh, when I say liberators, in terms of economic emancipation, we will not get anywhere if we continue to outsource the solutions to our country or our countries to outsiders. It is time that we took the initiative uh, of sorting out our own um, issues, looking at our own politics, looking at our own governance issues, looking at our own economics, health issues. Um, only then can we say to ourselves, you know, we, we, you know we, we know what we're doing now. We should stop the moaning, we should stop the crying. I understand we've got issues in terms of politics, but that will come to pass and we must be ready you know, to hit the ground running when all that resolves itself. There you go, Zimbabwe, Africa. Some words of inspiration from Mr. Lloyd Musipa from the Africa Public Research Institute. And I do hope you have listened and you benefited a lot from this discussion. And I'm hoping that, Mr. Musipa, you will see more members joining you. Oh yes, thank you very much. Yes, we, 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 we are getting a lot of support and a lot of inquiries on what we are doing. So uh, we are happy. I think we're going somewhere with this. Thank you so much for joining us at News of the South. And we do hope to join you in the not too distant future where we can um, talk about your progress and where things are going. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you.